Uh, welcome to another episode of Regen Civics. We're getting started a little bit quicker than usual today, so we'll let people trickle in and then we'll start our regular flow. Uh, but we can start with some announcements. And Nadine wanted to share the notion and the progress he's made with that. So I'll pass it over to Nadine. Hi, hi. Well, we'll be right with Thank us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Reiki. Thank you, Susan. Good to see you. Good to see you all. And yeah, I would love to share with us the Notion space today where we can collaborate and co-create and get some structure and order in our um, documents, in our um, workflows, in our processes. And um, some of you might know Notion already. So here we have the Region Civics Alliance and um, it's under construction. So everything you see here is a template and you can uh, play with it and um, work around. But we have some main um, topics that we um, can focus on here. And for example, every time when, uh, when Reiki after um, our meeting is uh, uh, kind of um, sharing what happened in the meeting and what's next, and we can share it here in the project updates. And then we have here the page called um, Foundations, and then we can see um, the Region Civics Guide, right? And a link to the game guide and a link to the alignment process. And of course, more, right? In whatever you want, you can create here and more. Um, when we go back, we have our meetings here and the recording. Things. And then we can have the list um, with episode five, we have the date, we have the recording and the notes, of course. Um, we can decide if we want to do the notes, continue doing it in a Google Doc, or if we just um, open this object here. And um, here we have the main things and here we can write down the different um, um, notes that we got. And this I copied just out of Discord. Right? What yes. I recommend is do a video going over it in detail like this and a recording of that, which we can share in the Discord, but just leave this for a really tight, maybe the next 30 seconds announcements. Okay, 30 seconds. So basically here we can, and co-create and collaborate together. And here we can share our um, docs that are important that we are working on. And um, we have even support for Notion. So if you need anything, if you um, don't know how to do it, you can go here and request them. Um, here, press on new, and then you can request for the moderation team um, if you need something, if you wanna co yeah, need any solution. Um, what is, uh, I think, very important for us is the focus areas. Here we have our different missions, and um, then here we would have um, something like the community ownership, and then we have a complete new um, workspace only focusing on community ownership. And then, yeah, this is the offering. It's an invitation for us to co-create. What I will do now is um, send out this workspace to everyone in the list here. And yeah, to these email addresses, I will um, send the invitation, then you will have full access to that workspace. Thank you so much. Yes, epic. And I think, I believe that needs its own like 20 minute deep dive by you and the Dean. So I wanna give it the right space it deserves. Um, but also each one of our projects could copy that. So that's gonna serve as an aggregator. So people who are interested in this whole movement at large can come and see what's going on with all of our projects as we continue to grow. So that could be a space to share shared roles that you might have in your community so that the wider network might be able to see the different roles that you're looking for and the different updates with your project, et cetera. So it can aggregate information, but they can also be used to coordinate our alliance itself. Um, so it's got multifunctional use cases and the Dean, you're doing incredible. Um, okay, any other alliance um, announcements before we kick off today? Robert. Yeah, I couldn't find my hand so quick. So yeah, um, uh, first announcement is that Jillian Harvey 
won't be here today because she's uh, flying back home to Canada today. And uh, Roberto will join in a, a bit later. We, we were just on another call. So, and I have one question, but I think I can save it or share it now if you want. Uh, sure, share it now. If it's relating to the last episode, then we can weave it through. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's about, did you guys get any feedback or are there some new insights from the email that was sent with the three questions? Yeah, or are you still I'll on pass it? pass that yeah. to Will, because he's overseeing that. And I just saw him here. Thanks. Um, I heard over to Will, but I was just sending him the message in the chat to Lauren directly. So I didn't actually know what the question was. Um, all right. Do you have any I'm feedback listening. from the, the responses we reached out to all the different alliances? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, so I'll get, I can share the, the sheet in this chat. Uh, copy link. I've had a response from almost everyone now. Um, we're, back, we're up to about 10 of the 13 projects that have responded and confirmed. And Lauren, I did send the email to you, but I'll double check and, and maybe it didn't send for whatever reason, but... Um, you're, on, you're on the sheet. Does that answer the question or do you want more? Do you want me to like tell you what people have said? I've just copy and pasted all the feedback from each project. So yeah, you can just read it yourself, I guess. I mean, if you have any three critical takeaways from it that we could all can learn from that might benefit how we're holding space here and moving forward. I, mean, I, would, I would tell you that everyone's saying, yes, they're finding value in this process. There's not, I haven't had anyone say they're not finding value, which is great. Um, I know some people are saying it's going slower than they'd like it to. I think that's primarily because of the, the need for funding. A lot of the projects are showing up here because they're uh, looking for help with fundraising. Um, so maybe that's creating a, a pressure and, and the, the idea that this is going slow, but I like the fact that it's going slow because it's creating what Reiki talks about of like a, a central vision that everyone understands and the narrative is, is in order before we open the door and then end up with lots of problems. Um, but it seems that there's, there's, there's yeah, unanimous consent that this is valuable. Uh, people want to talk about funding and legal structures, I think. Um, other than that, it's just, yeah, I think it's wise for everyone to have a look at the spreadsheet. Whoever, whoever hasn't filled it out yet, if you're representing a project, please do. Um, this time seems to be the, ma the majority of representatives saying this is a good time to continue meeting. Um, not everyone's gonna be able to make every meeting and some of the farmers would prefer evening calls, but uh, the majority are happy with this time. So over to you, Raggi. Awesome. Um, thanks, Will. Was that helpful, Rob? Yeah, it was helpful and also very interesting if, if uh, projects are asking to go faster, because I think we mentioned it maybe would be valuable to slow down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, that's, that's uh, maybe something uh, else to talk about later. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we can do a both and. I think we can go faster and slower. It's a self-paced learning environment here. So it's definitely, you know, weave in when it's valuable, weave out when it's not. Um, that's exactly how we're building this ecosystem here. So, um, and we'll integrate some more of that feedback in different sessions that are focused on that. Um, Anders, please. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a way for us to, uh, kind of create two different tracks or just, you know, just like a, planting a seed for maybe there's a way for a group to move forward faster and a group within the 13 to not move forward faster and for to and to provide both value and to like meet people where they're at and then use the first group potentially as the first fundraising group and then potentially a second one can learn from what the first ones did. So I don't know what the answer is, but maybe there's a way to do both and like you said. Well, we can have two tracks and what could be nice is you can participate in both of them. So it's not really actually the 13 projects are splitting in two. So I highly recommend if you're part of the projects that think it's moving slower and want to dive right into legal. Uh, I know there's already a working group that's meeting on this. Let's just expand that working group into, you know, a second track and go at a different pace. Um, my own super biases for this track that I'm holding, because <laughs> I would go against my own ethics if I didn't, 
is to go a little bit slower and make sure our foundations are solid before we go out there and try to raise funds. Um, because that's one of the many mistakes that intentional communities have already made and I've already warned us about. Um, so if we can <laughs> heed their wisdom, we don't have to repeat what we've already learned in previous generations. Um, my opinions, of course. Uh, so I will keep a little bit slower on this one so we have a little bit more foundations with what we're working with. Um, does anyone have any questions related to last week? Anders, was that helpful? Yep. Um, do we have any questions from last week about the process, um, putting the game guide together, um, whether you find this useful or valuable to have a game guide before launching, what steps come next, anything like that? Are we pretty much in flow and we just want to continue with what the, the session is about today? Robert again. Yeah, I think the, the game guide looks, uh, I mean, it looks very good. So congratulations on that part. I think you, you put a lot of effort and work in that and it's, it's very worked, uh, it's worked out very well in detail. So I just wanted to show appreciation for that, thanks. And yes, it's helpful very much. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to create an ecosystem that shows appreciation for all of these artifacts that are helpful for the ecosystem. So this game guide, and this is what the region civics do is for. So to speed things along then for today, we can go through a process of what does it look like to set up the region civics DAO. And I can literally show you what that looks like, kind of go through a couple steps. And we're all part of region civics. And I'm also sharing with you how to do this to come in here and ask for your part of region civics. Um, so this is how we're gonna then create that shared container that we all own and are part of. Um, so that's where you know I'm headed. Are there any questions before I dive into that? All right, I actually did wanna share one thing before I started today. Um, and that's a story that's gonna be, I think, helpful in helping us design our you know, economies going forward. This was one of the stories that I heard that really helped me like completely shift my paradigm and how I was seeing the world. And the story goes like this, an economist and a sociologist were going across the world, looking at a bunch of cultures to see how many hours they needed to work in order to meet all of their basic needs. So they're trying to figure out, you know, which economy is most efficient, you know, how many, what's the least number of hours that we need to work in order for all of our basic needs to be met, was the, the general question they were trying to answer. So they're going across and they're counting hours and figuring out how many cultures, you know, spend time working, right? Um, but they're now in the, the Kung territory. So this is a place in the Kalahari Desert, one of the harshest climates on the planet. There's, I don't know how to say the name of the tribe, but it's spelled K-U-N-G, you know, exclamation point. And they're watching them as one of the bands go out and go hunting every day. And they're seeing how many hours they're going out to hunt and gather their food, right? And they notice that after a few weeks, one of the guys in the tribe, he's not going out with the rest of the other guys hunting. And they notice this is a pattern. So they go up to one of the guys who looks like he's the one running the tribe, you know, running the hunts. And he's like, hey, what do you think about this guy not going out there hunting with you every day? And they're like, well, we don't understand. He doesn't, he doesn't want to hunt. And they're like, well, you know, you go out there, you do all of this work, you, you get a kill, you come back, you feed the tribe, and he gets to eat the food. He's like, well, yeah, of course, he's hungry. You're like, yeah, why wouldn't he eat the food? It's like, oh, well, aren't you upset that you're going out there and doing all this work? And they're like, we, we still don't understand. He's like, okay, let me break it down real simple for you. You go out there and you do all this stuff you don't want to do. And they're like, whoa, 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 time out. We're going to stop you right there. We love hunting. This is our passion, our purpose. Like, we're out there, we're having a lot of fun. Like, if this guy doesn't want to join us, like, so what? He doesn't have to, you know, <laughs> like, this doesn't bother us. Like the, the food is the surplus we share because we're community. Like if he wants to stay back there and talk to all the wives, like that's fantastic, you know, like <laughs> right on. So they just didn't have this concept that we have today of what work is, this concept of doing something you don't want to do in order to, you know, serve a social purpose or something to that effect. Um, so I think we can kind of bake this into the general philosophy of how we're designing economies here is how can we design a civilization or a society where we bake things like work out of the story? We don't need them anymore, right? And then it becomes a design question. You know, instead of having someone go out there and clean the sewers because we have sewers to begin with because we poop in toilets and all of this stuff, 
So someone has this really crappy, literally, job, we can actually say, well, why does this job exist? Do we need sewers? Wait, no, we should be composting our waste in house and you know, growing abundance and food with it. Like, uh, actually, this whole paradigm is broken. Let's write that job out of the future, right? So when we're thinking about what roles, which is the step we're going into today, what roles we're designing for our communities, I think it's very helpful to design also from the perspective of designing it for yourself. What role would you want? You know, like how would you want to be presented a role? Do you find this fun and fascinating? We're not designing systems for others, which is what a lot of designers can get into. You know, I think Facebook fell under this. Like they were totally fine with manipulating people and getting them addicted to screens and all this terrible stuff because they were designing technology for others. You know, they weren't designing it for themselves. They probably, otherwise they wouldn't want to try to addict themselves and manipulate their brains in such a way, right? So if we're designing our communities for what we would prefer and we're designing it for ourselves and our community, right? Then we don't need to worry about whether the market finds this useful because our community finds it useful, right? Um, so that's another way of looking at the basic, you know, philosophy design behind designing your organizations here as we get into this. Um, so that was a lot. If anyone has any feedback, thoughts, or whatever about any of that, right now is a good time to share before I keep going. This is all good. So a good time to tell me if I'm crazy, if these ideas are too far out there. I think that was a perfect analogy. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Anna, and thank you all. Let's keep going. All right, so now I'm going to dive right into, let me bring this up. The region civics DAO or do. Um, this is one more aside I'm going to take because it's been a common question. What's a DAO, D-A-O, versus what's a do, D-H-O? So there's the more useful definition of DAO, which is basically digital technology or digital organizing. It's any form of organization that's done using digital tools. Some of them are on the Web3 space, some of them not, but all of those things are being called DAOs today. Um, what a DAO used to be in the general definition when it was a tiny definition was a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, which means it's not something that continues to need to make new decisions in order to operate. For example, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a governance system that's kind of gridlocked. It's autonomous, it automatically pays out rewards. It doesn't need humans to show up and say, yeah, did that miner mine or not? How much do they get paid? Like all of those decisions are automated. So as an organization that could achieve a purpose, which Bitcoin's purpose is one, use a bunch of electricity and two, create a, you know, a mutable store of value that was uncensorable. And it's doing both of those things, but it requires no board of directors. It doesn't need to be a core team, you know, sitting there maintaining anything. This happens autonomously. So that was the original definition of a DAO. It's a decentralized autonomous organization, something that's out there alive and breathing and doesn't require, you know, necessarily a set of humans to constantly be there to keep it alive, right? Um, so then when we came along and we were thinking of organizations here, we didn't want to write humans out of the equation. You know, in DAOs, it was like, okay, we can have a self-driving autonomous fleet of cars. And if they're paying for their own, you know, maintenance and they're filling up on electricity on their own, you could have no humans and this could be paying someone to a DAO or blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of like, how do we design humans out of our economies and automate the processes? So we wanted to do kind of the inverse. We wanted to create a, hu a human-centric organization and use just some of these tools to facilitate that process. But there's a lot more that goes on to being a do, a human-centric, you know, holonic, regenerative organization than there is to just, you know, plugging in a, a tool set and signing up to a DAO and clicking some buttons, right? Like launching a platform here doesn't make you a do, if that makes sense. So that was kind of our separation as we were planning to create a new class of organizations that had human-centric design baked into the heart of what they were all about. Um, so anyway, that's what we're trying to do here with do's versus DAOs. Uh, cool, so here is the Regenerative Civics DAO. You can see that there's nothing going on because nothing started yet, but let's come down and see what is going on. I put up three staging proposals to make three of the first artifacts in the Regen Civics do. And as anyone applies to become a member, if one, you're a representative of 13 projects, and two, you're representing an Alliance member, then please come here and request membership because you will be the first um, members of this, driving it forward and making decisions. 
how do we make decisions? It needs 90% approval. So we're not quite consensus, but we're pretty close. We can have 10% you know, defecting from an idea before it fails. And we need a minimum 30% quorum. These things are highly adjustable, and these are just the basic parameters. And we can use these parameters to change them. So if anyone thinks there's a better set, put up a proposal to change this to a better set. And if it you know, follows the current requirements, then it changes. And this is how governance evolves in every one of our organizations. We start off with an initial set of parameters, which I'll actually show you up here how to configure that. So first you can configure your DAO to have all the design and make it beautiful and look how you want it. So it's very specialized here, which is nice. Um, and then we have the vote duration, vote quorum, and vote alignment unity. So just by changing these around, if you're the DAO creator, um, so you have the authority, meaning you're the one that set up the DAO to begin with, um, going forward, it's just, it just requires a little bit more coding. What it's going to be is any member can come in here and play with this and then click save. And when they do that, it pops up a proposal. And then if that proposal passes, then all their changes are approved. Um, and that will be the general process for evolving your do going forward. Is once we get all sorts of, what we want is really like an app store environment here where we have a bunch of coordination apps. So that is each one of our communities learn a protocol or a pattern or a way of organizing that really worked for them. We can kind of codify it into an app. And then another community could be like, yep, we love that. Let's come into the app store. Let's grab that app. Let's put up a proposal to launch it in our community. If it votes on it, it passes, you know, the settings change and their community evolves. So this is how we can continue to evolve collectively across all of our projects as well, right? Um, and then you can share the Discord link or whatever link. This could be whatever link you're using to coordinate. Um, and then another link for your documentation. So that's the general stuff to set up your organization here. And then when you do, it'll show up in the Explore over here. So you can see some of the other projects that have already launched. Um, any questions on the basic functionality of a DAO, how it works, do rather in this situation, um, or anything about region civics before I keep just going? Yep, Anders. So just to clarify uh, with regard to setting it up, uh, in here, there is no difference between a DAO and a DO. It's just you happen to be saying one versus the other because it's more of a philosophical definition of it. 100%. Yeah. At this moment in time, there's no technical difference between them. However, as all things and evolution happens, it's very likely that there will start being a technical difference between those two organizations as things mature. But currently, it's just consider them all the same things. Sorry for muddying the waters and adding too much complexity. <laughs> um, Lauren, then Anna. Did that answer your question, Anders? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you mentioned something about any member can come in and change these settings. And that was where my curiosity was like, okay, as we set this up, some members are going to be a little bit more advanced technically than others. Um, how easy is it for somebody to come in and delete something, screw something up, you know, and what would you recommend in terms of um, management of the, the back end and, and how many people are involved? Yeah. In um, gosh, let me clarify that. I said that anyone can come here to the settings, mess things around, then they come down here when they click save. I have a badge right now that's giving me the ability to actually just click save and it saves. So that's one way of managing those powers is by giving a badge. And currently we set it up because that's easier. The other way of managing it going forward will be by clicking save, it really says propose. Then that goes up as a proposal. So if someone comes in and they don't know what they're doing and they make a silly proposal, then you know, and you as a community, you don't vote that proposal up. You don't give it the you know, necessary quorum it needs by supporting it. So just ignoring it and it would fail, right? So there's no chance here that someone could accidentally, you know, screw up the organization, right? Unless you're an organization that votes on things without reading them, then maybe you might do that to yourselves. So don't vote on things without reading them. Uh, Anna. Thank you. Um, may I ask a question about DAO in general, or is this specifically for the um, community global fundraising process? Uh, might as well just ask your question. 
Right, thank you. <laughs> so with that, I have, um, as you know, a few clients that are community developers and community builders, a few others that have um, incredible innovations and inventions for um, humanitarian sustainable products, uh, also in infrastructure and development. So does it matter if it's what type of company or product or service or offering it is? Can it be a resort or let's say a tangible product that can open a DAO for any specific purpose or does it have to have uh, a an alignment with uh, community building or specifically a seeds pr um, project yeah um, anyone for any purpose can come to dao.hypha.earth or even hypha.earth and apply to set up their DAO and you can start seeing some you know like kitchen DAO greenwood DAO well maybe greenwood is um, some aren't necessarily related to the regenerative renaissance mission. It's just that's where most of our communication has gone so far. Um, so Haifa itself will be a general DAO platform for any group doing anything that requires cool coordination tools. Um, Regen Civics itself, which is then this organization within it, um, our organization is going to be focused on regenerative projects. So different regenerative cities eco villages resorts land based you know changing and transitioning civilization type projects. So that's just focused on this particular alliance not on general DAO tool if that's helpful okay very helpful thank you so this is where then in the region civics alliance where the specific communities then can set up their DAO. yet if it's more of a general product then it goes to haifa and it's it's the same platform right got it yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, just they're not going to be part of the token swapping and the index token and all the other stuff that we're creating here and they won't have membership in this DAO that i'm talking about right here right now understood thank you awesome thanks anna great question too um okay so i'm back to our region civics DAO, which again is very empty so this is what all of your DAOs are going to look like when you get started so the first process you're going to want to do is create what we call an archetype so and this is if you're a do, you might call him an archetype. Oh, I logged into my wife's account. This is what happens when you share the same. Pardon me for a moment. And this is how you log into it using Anchor. So it's going to look a similar process as this. You don't actually get to see what I'm doing because it's hiding it. But. Okay, so now I can come here and see what I've proposed. <laughs> so this will be the first step you take in setting up your dues is putting stuff in them and filling them out. So one of the first things you're gonna be doing is setting up roles. So what is a role? It's what all of you are doing. You're all playing some role in your organization right now. So what we're trying to do is make those things explicit and then start compensating you for what you're doing right now. So again, we're designing this from a very you know first person point of view. Design this for yourself first. So this is what I have done for Regen Civics is I'm calling my role the seasonal steward. Uh, what I'm doing right now for season one, that can be and should be other people in different seasons. So then what I'm doing right here becomes a role. It's not Reiki's running Regen Civics, it's Reiki's playing the seasonal steward role who runs Regen Civics. And that role, you know, transitions from member to member as whatever protocols we put together, right? And probably from season to season. Um, which is actually what I'm proposing is I might run the first couple seasons to kind of get the gears going. But once this organization's reached any sort of maturity, I would love to hand this pan off to somebody else, um, this role, which is 100% time role. And there's only one of these roles. Um, and then we can use uh, mimicking Haifa's bands is what I've just done here for simplicity is this is the most complex band I'm calling it. So putting it at 190K. I'll share more on the, the actual outline of the Region Civics launch proposal. And then I'll share that with you all because it's a similar idea of how you might launch your dues where you give the basic agreements for how things work. Um, but what I'm proposing is that we start with three pay bands. So 190 is the highest, then it goes down to 150 and then 110. And then what we get to do, so I'm gonna start being all over the place, bear with me, is we can use a badge. So I'll actually watch do a process of creating this badge. So I just had this idea, right? My idea was, it's not a new idea, but bear with me, that we have three different 
uh, types of badges is you've got this apprentice badge, then you have the intermediate badge, and then you have a master badge. Intermediate could also be journeyman, however you're calling it, right? The apprentice badge might take a salary and cut it in half. It says you're new at this, you don't have a lot of skills, we're going to cut your salary in half. The journeyman badge might just give you a one times bonus, so it doesn't change your salary at all. And then the master badge maybe gives you a 1.5 times bonus, right? So I had that idea to create that. Now I'll actually show how we create it. So we come to an organization asset. Actually, let me start over because this is probably helpful to explain to you all. So these are the types of proposals you can make. One, a contribution, which is, hey, I've done something to the organization. I want to get paid. One is I'm planning on making a lot of contributions to this organization. So I wanna do a recurring activity. The final one is organization assets. So this is how we create the organization itself. So these are things the organization owns, not you, right? You have an assignment to a role, that's something you own. You own the assignment, you don't own the role, right? So this is us designing our organizations. We come here and say, we wanna create a badge. So we go down to badge. So I could put in the title for it. I can say, you know, journeyman. I could put on the badge restrictions, which the only one we have right now, we'll start having a bunch of different things and knobs we can play with. But the first one we're starting with is how long this badge is applicable before it goes away. And having everything have a deadline where it disappears is really helpful because that means your community has to continually agree to something and not just forget about something. So if you're giving people powers, you want to keep remembering that they have those powers. Because otherwise, you know, someone might come in, gain a lot of power, leave the community, they have maybe the keys to the bank account or something like that. And then a year goes by, they're no longer in the community, they're not connected anymore, and now you can't reach them anymore in order to get them to give you the keys back, you know, like that's not a good situation. So if your badge is giving something like that, then you want it to actually end on its own and not require we come, we, you know, keep coming back and doing housekeeping, if that makes sense. So that's the first restriction here is you put how long is it alive for? How many um, periods? A period is a week. So in this case, it's 24 weeks. You have to keep updating your badge. Maybe that's way too often. We'll do like 100 weeks or whatever. Put a description of what it is. Update an image. Let's just do this. You're handicapped right now. And then this is where you get to give it a bonus or a negative bonus. So this was the journeyman badge, so it would be zero. But let's say it was the apprentice badge. I would say then it would be at 50%. So you put in 0.5. And now what this is going to do is it's going to cut the rewards in half. All right, so then if I'm holding this badge, I get half the pay that I normally would have. So you can use this badge concept for doing all sorts of things in your community where you wanna give somebody powers, but then they might also get some type of benefit for holding that badge. Um, leave it out saying. So for example, some communities wanna be you know, experience-based communities. They wanna say that, hey, if you've done a permaculture design course, then maybe you're gonna get a 10% bonus when you're holding the permaculture design role. You know. Or maybe if you've demonstrated that you've done X, Y, Z, whatever, any of this can be turned into a badge in your community and then it can give bonuses or take value, however you want to play it um, for having that badge and then do other things. So we're going to, again, keep adding things and more powers into these types of things. Um, so for example, in our community, what's two badges we would start with? One is the Gnosis Safe key holder. So Gnosis Safe is on Ethereum. Uh, we do a lot of stuff on Ethereum. We want to have organizations in Ethereum too, but it's more expensive to do all this stuff that I'm showing with you right now on Ethereum. So what we're going to do is we can have our organization kind of live here, but we're still going to connect with the Ethereum organization. And then whoever has this badge, they hold the keys for the accounts on Ethereum for Regen Civics. So if we do NFT sales and we're doing fundraising when we do our crowd pooling, that will very likely be connected with the Ethereum communities and others. So all the money that we're raising over there, where there's a lot more liquidity, where it makes a lot more sense, plus there's awesome communities over there, just makes sense to play in multiple. You know, who's holding the accounts for the DAOs in those communities are gonna be governed and this do using this badge. So if you hold this badge, then you have the, the keys for the Gnosis safe, which is an, an Ethereum based DAO. 
I know that was a lot, but that's kind of one different badge that you can create. So I know projects are thinking about that, being like, well, we want to launch on multiple projects. This is how you could do that. And this is how you answer Lauren's question, which is how do you govern powers to things like this? Well, this is the process for doing that. So if you hold this badge, you get these powers. That badge is gonna keep dying after a certain number of periods. So you're gonna to have to keep agreeing that, yep, we trust these people to hold the keys on that you know, platform and ecosystem. Same thing for being a Discord moderator. That's another you know, power in our community that comes with a lot of power. That means you can ban members, you can silence people. You know, there's a lot of things that happen with you know, holding this power, right? So we wanna govern that. So that becomes the Discord moderator badge within our community. You need to be holding this badge. So then as a community, if we think one moderator is being tyrannical or abusing their powers in any way, the next time where that badge comes up for voting, then you can vote it down and say like, actually, I'm gonna vote this assignment down for that person because they're abusing their power X, Y, Z or whatever. So this is how our communities can self-govern themselves, right? So what we're doing is we're building the basic infrastructure, which is gonna be all of these different badge types and roles as we discover them. Um, so that was a lot, again, as always. Um, any questions, thoughts, anything related to the process of creating badges or roles? Is this process clear, confusing? Any of that before I keep going? John. Uh, yeah, you, you, uh, you mentioned uh, getting paid for doing this role. Um, and I'm, you know, what's the what's the business model behind RCA that, uh, you know, has income coming in that allows for people to get paid and how, where, where does it stack up that says, you know, we have a budget because we have this much coming in, we can afford to pay this much out. How, how is that economic process working? Let me take you to a more mature platform to show us something I want to share with you. Um, for starters, Regen Civics currently has zero dollars to pay people in any upfront income, um, but it has the ability to mint Regen Civics tokens and distribute those to people contributing to the project. So it's going to be paying people in Regen Civics tokens exclusively right now, but Regen Civics itself is also participating in the crowdfunding for the 13 projects. So Regen Civics will be funding for itself, which will be if you want to, you know, buy into this general concept and idea and the index token and that sort of thing, you buy the Regen Civics token. If you want to invest in one of the projects directly because you're wanting to contribute to that, join there, invest in their particular idea or whatever, then you buy the projects token directly, right? So then the income coming in from that we will use to continue running these seasons, building the index, etc. Um, so that's kind of the general region civics model. Then once we become an ecosystem for transitioning into regenerative economies, then we're approaching institutions and larger investors who want to fund the transition that we're facilitating here. And that's where they can come in and start putting money into region civics directly. So what we're building through the region civics alliance is then how could we steward that money? So I'm saying we can have one representative from each organization and one representative from each project. Those are the members who vote inside the region civics organization. So when we go out there and approach an institution and say, hey, do you wanna fund our ecosystem, not just a project that's very risky, but now you're funding a hundred projects in the process for starting new projects. You know, Now you can put a hundred billion dollars into that or more. And there are literally trillions on the sidelines looking to fund <laughs> regeneration, but there's nowhere to put that because all the projects that are doing it were all startups. So we need to band together in our startup phases, pool our resources, create that ecosystem that the institutions require in order to fund at the level they're wanting to fund. And then our conversations get a lot shorter instead of having a whole bunch of conversations raising $1,000 each or whatever, um, we're having a few conversations talking about tens of hundreds of millions, right, or more. So that's kind of the general concept behind Regen Civics Alliance itself. So let's pull together so we can move a little bit quicker, more efficiently, and direct resources more effectively. Um, so that's the goal of the organization that we're building itself. So then what does it look like to govern that? So again, we have the scenario, 100 million comes in, then it's our question to say, what do we do with that next season? So then as a representative of a project, you could put up a proposal that says, well, we got 100 million, our project is going to do X, Y, Z, you know, we could use 2 million of that and we can do all of this epic stuff or whatever. And then that becomes a proposal 
that comes up into the region civics do. The members of the whole community is like, yep, we love what you're doing. You're sharing a bunch of knowledge with us, like you're a super valuable community member. Like, yeah, we want to support this. And then what that looks like is then the region civics token itself starts owning the tokens of the projects that we're investing into. So when we send that 2 million to a project, that project sends back 2 million of their project's tokens, which they're able to create, right? And then the region civics organization itself starts becoming backed by all of these projects it's investing into. So that's kind of the, the tokenomics model for region civics. And I think we can duplicate that within our projects itself. Everything scales holonically beautifully, right? So we can use the same methodology for how we encourage neighborhoods within our village to self-organize around running and you know, funding for their neighborhood, right? So we can kind of scale this up and down as far as we want to go, which could be really interesting. Um, <clears throat> did that answer your question, John? Uh, just one follow on there. Um, does that mean that at the project level that uh, we need to be showing that when we take in investment, uh, we can utilize that investment to create some kind of a return um, that, you know, there's a, you know, a profit in, in that? Um, so the return is the value of the land we're regenerating. So all of our projects are backed by all of the project tokens, at least the ones in region civics that we're working with. The token value is gonna be connected to the value of the land in the project. As the value of the land itself and the project itself is increasing, the token value itself is increasing. So what an investor is investing into into region civics is an index, meaning I'm gonna own a share of all of these different organizations and projects. That's all region civics is really doing. It's inflating it a little bit further beyond that to pay you know, the staff that's helping run it, but that's not gonna be a huge team. Um, the main function of region civics in the token is to be that index. So it's a cleaner sell for larger investors. Instead of one project that has a higher fail potential, it's the same thing you know, VCs are doing, right? You invest in 50 startups because that's the right model. This is a similar concept, except we're running the incubator and we're an ecosystem where we're all co-helping each other. So instead of typical VCs where all 50 of their portfolio projects, they hardly know each other, they're not cooperating, like they don't build synergies between them. We are, we're building as a whole ecosystem, we're sharing value and resources and we're growing together, right? Um, so it becomes a much easier sell for larger money because they need that low risk investment. So that's the function of the region civics token and the economy we're building. And then of course, all of you projects that are participating in this, you're the benefactors, because one, you get a vote, and two, you could be the recipient of you know, the pro uh, funding that we're bringing in, right? Um, so Anders and then Robert. John, was that helpful? <laughs> that was a lot. Uh, very much, thank you yeah. much. You're welcome. Thank you, appreciate it. Yep. Anders. Another point of value that um, that we're all creating is the uh, like the intellectual value of various different like businesses or products or ideas or inventions that are being created and being birthed from these places. So what's so beautiful about this is like we're, we can leverage those things and in essence um, uh, raise money towards what we feel you know an equitable value of those different things are that are in connection with our land. You know, so I think that'll help all of our uh, values also go up. So many different responses to that. Um, absolutely, yes. So Region Civics, I just talked about being an index for these change making projects and everything we're doing. But that's one focus. So you can create multiple organizations with different index focuses for the different elements of regeneration we need to do right now. So you can have one for particularly the technology and the food industry that's super regenerative, you know, and just investing in those organizations, right? Um, so we can start creating other indexes amongst ourselves. Um, the other way is let me show you the literal process then of us launching our do and doing what you've just described. You come here, you click a new proposal, you put in a contribution. 
And this is what I wanted to share with you up until this point, because we had to figure out how are people actually applying for this contribution? What do you value? You know, what number should you put to this? What's an equitable way that you're using the same protocol across all people? This is inevitably going to come up. So you might as well do it to start with, <laughs> um, which is kind of what I was sharing so much beforehand. Um, so you can come in here and actually say, you know, I created this technology for the trip community. And then, of course, put in a description of it, and you can put in an IPFS file. So IPFS is storing your files on a decentralized database because we're cool and hippie like that. Um, and this automatically uploads it to IPFS so that your documents can't be edited. So when you put in information here, it's not something you can change later on because it's stored on this decentralized database. Right? Um, and then you can put in a dollar value for how much you think it's worth. And this is what you really need protocols for. Um, but for Regen Civics itself, this is what I would suggest. And you can watch what protocols we're using and maybe mimic some of them. So I was just on the phone with some of the guys of La Tierra, and they created an incredible master plan for themselves. And it's in a kind of a template form. It's completely gorgeous. They're saying $200,000 upfront and tons of hours of human time have come into this, right? So we wanna put a dollar value to that incredible creation that's been open sourced and brought into this alliance. So that is literally what Regen Civics Alliance is going to start doing to begin with, is we're going to start minting and issuing tokens to the organizations and the projects who are doing awesome things and contributing other resources to this alliance. So if you have other templates like that that you've created as a project, then you can earn tokens for them. If you're helping make the videos for the alliance itself, you can earn alliance tokens. If anything that you're creating for your own project, you make it more generic so the whole ecosystem can benefit from it, then you can earn tokens from Regen Civics from you know, open sourcing it and making it generic. Um, so this is how we pay for templating so we can start collaborating more effectively. Um, and again, it starts setting up the story for investors who are like, yep, we love this movement. We want to support it. Great. Then you can support it by buying into Regen Civics as an alliance. And now we've already recognized all the different value that's come into this so that we all have that shared interest in the success of this alliance and start having a whole bunch of tokens ourselves in it, right? So anyway, this is where you can come in and put a dollar amount, and then you get to choose how much you defer versus pay up front. So this is what you get to do as a community and set your own policies for how much you have in the bank cash tokens to pay up up front people versus how much you have to compensate them in your organization token. Some people might have a lot of money, and this is their way of investing, so they want all of their tokens in you know, your organization token. So again, you put in a dollar value of their invest. Well, okay, so this is what you do for literal investors is the investor would come in and say, hey, you know, I sent in a $100,000 investment and I've already sent it to this address. I sent it to your Ethereum wallet or wherever they sent it, right? And then they prove it in the description here. So on the previous step, this is where they prove that they made the payment and they can send an IPFS file proving it, right? And then they come in here and claim their compensation for it. And then this goes up as a proposal. The community, of course, passes it because the money was sent in. And then they're issued their organization tokens. Or you have a developer that came in or whatever, and they need to have at least 80% of their pay up front. You know, they're happy taking 20% of the project because you're really enthusiastic and they love what you're doing. So they're like, yeah, you know, we'll take some of it in the project token, but we need at least 80%. You get to then dial that down and say, okay, 20% is going to be deferred. So then as a community, you have this thing we call infinite treasury, where as long as you're deferring all pay, you get to keep minting your tokens. But what you're doing then is you're liquidating, or rather you're decreasing the value of all the historical tokens that have ever been created, unless your project is getting more valuable, right? So that's why you have to make sure that when you're putting in a dollar equivalent here, your project is actually capturing value. And that's up to the governance of the community. Because if not, then you're diluting previous contributions to just pay out new people for not actually adding value. But if everyone is really adding the value that you're paying out, then you're not diluting anyone at all. You're just maintaining an equitable, um, stable economic system here where you're not concentrating rewards, um, nor are you diluting people. Um, that was a lot, again, but this is the how you would start your organizations. Is you can go through, put a dollar value of all the historical contributions, if you have a treasury, you can start paying people up front. Great. Start having them take cash tokens. If not, you might just be one of the ones, the many ones that are just doing it 100% deferred. 
And then this is how you do the initial contribution accounting for your organization. I suggest pairing this with like a beautiful kickoff ceremony where you bring everyone together and this is the birth of your organization. Now everyone's got their percentage share, they all see their stake in this, um, and you all now have the shared interest to make it happen. That's kind of the whole point of these tokens in one way. Um, you can also come down here and do custom compensation if you could do it weird. And the final piece is this gives you the voice token. So this is where you get to modify it however you want. If you want to be an organization that's you know one contribution, one voice, then you know put it at one. If you're a one person, one voice, and everyone already has their tokens, then you never issue any more, and you always have people put it at zero. You know, if you want to say investors don't need voice because we want them to be silent, don't give them any voice. Or maybe we want to give them a multiplier or whatever. This is where you as a community get to decide do we how much voice we want to give this contribution, right? By default, it just says every dollar you contribute, every you know token of voice you earn. That's how Regen Civics is gonna operate. So then it's governed by the, mm, actually I lied because we, we have to decide as a community how we're gonna operate, whether we're gonna be governed by um, contributions. So the more you contribute, the more voice you have, or if we want one member, one vote. So if we're all representing one organization and one project, then membership itself gives you one equal vote in the Alliance, which is actually what I'm leaning towards. Um, so anyway, that was a whole lot. I'll pause there. And Robert and Kelly, then William. Thanks, Maggie. So I think my observation sort of, uh, I think Anders uh, came with the same conclusion that the, the, the RCA tokens are backed by the land and the fruits of the land. And that can be a lots of things. So and I, I want to say that it's backed by regeneration and let that be the truth. Um, and then, yeah, it's backed by land, it's backed by the communities we're building, it's backed by the cultures and stories we're creating, because that's incredibly valuable. And that's what, you know, Forex is land. Forexing land isn't by, you know, putting a garden on it. Forexing land is telling the story of how we're transforming lives and making that something that people are willing, you, you guys all get it. So all of this is what's kind of backing that token. So it's really like, okay, how do you invest in an index of this new civilization where you can invest in this, right? And then the stuff yeah. that Deeds is doing with helping us all make our own currencies and localizing our economic systems and all of our projects start making our own currencies too. But then switching from project to the next is like, well, I've got these you know, currency tokens and the project tokens and I'm moving to another. So I just go to the exchange and swap into the new project. So then as long as one project is like accounting for your contributions, that should be currency to go to all these projects across the globe that we're now networked with, right? You just need to go to the right exchange and swap it between them. And that's also a function Regen Civics will play. So we'll be doing liquidity pooling, meaning we'll help set up the exchanges for all of your project tokens. And then we'll play the counterparty of that. So when people wanna come into your project and they only have Bitcoin, but you haven't done all the work to make it so people can buy your token with Bitcoin yet, then they come in, they take their Bitcoin, buy Regen Civics tokens, take the Regen Civics and buy your token. And then if you guys really need cash, then you take your token and you sell it for our fiat gateways that we're working on. So anyway, so that's kind of the way is region civics token could also be our, you know, barrier from the fiat world to the new economies that we're building. What if uh, the persons we're trying to onboard don't have any cryptocurrencies at all? Exactly. So that's what I was just saying is then they can come into region civics directly and we would facilitate that. And also there's a bunch of alliance organizations already showing up to do that as well. Uh, so region civics wouldn't be alone. Some of the organizations that are part of the region civics alliance are focused on that actually. Um, so that's part of being part of this alliance is by gaining some of those benefits. Does that make sense? And just one idea regarding the votes thing or mechanism. Uh, I just read that uh, somebody posted apply an article about DAOs not being so decentralized. And I was actually thinking if you make it be that the more you contribute, for example, you have more vote voting power, that kind of make it, make, makes it uh, exclusive for newcomers to have a voice in the organization. And perhaps I was thinking it could be one person, one vote, and then the contribution would kind of sum up some percentage on top of that one vote so that you don't exceed uh, more than one, two votes, for example, something like that, or more than 
certain amount of votes based on, on your contributions. Yeah, absolutely. And once we launch, re well, maybe right before it, we'll have some governance calls that are focused on the region's civics governments more deeply, where we can kind of get into that and come up with a proposal together. Um, and there's an org co-creation channel in Discord where we're talking about this now. So we can carry these conversations forward there because I don't think we have enough time today to respond to this appropriately and get to Kelly and William. Um, so I'd love this question. I want to follow up with it in Discord. And if you will indulge me, we can do it there. Um, and real quick, because I want to plug this in, the contribution accounting token for voice, if you're doing it that way, then another important lever and a do is that you have that voice deteriorate. So that if you earn something three years ago, maybe it's got a half-life of three years or one year or whatever, so that it doesn't concentrate, it's constantly being passed over to the new generation. And then you get to customize when that new generation is for you, right? By however long the half-life is. So I do think that is very important that you don't you know, have it so that we just repeat what capitalism gave us, which is, you know, all the wealth concentrates, it tries to reset, we need to have a revolution to reset it, and then we play the monopoly game again until, you know, grandma gets angry and flips the board over, you know. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. Kelly, and then William. <laughs> I love that analogy. That's funny. Um, yeah, enjoying this discussion immensely, as Abraham Hicks would say. Uh, my question, though, is, uh, when it comes to those tokens plugging into the land, um, what like a deeper deeper question related to what are they backed by? Like, is that equity in the development company? Is that brand IP partial shares equity? Is that um, you know <clears throat> connected to the treasury? You know, what sort of obligations? If there were a mass sell off or a crash of the market, is there any sort of connection to the land? And if not, then how does it? How do you actually prove to an investor in a legal contract that it's actually backed by something? Um, yeah, so there's a whole chapter in our season one that's going to be on legal structures um, where we're really unpack this because this is a recurring question. It requires a lot of time and there's some models already out there which will have them share their model during that chapter and then you can copy, mimic, do whatever you need to do. Um, so that'll be the space to share really deeply about that. In short, there's a couple different ways. You can do it so there's a direct legal connection. So like a Wyoming DAO LLC, for example, you can literally use a DAO to issue shop shares and they're a one-to-one -one conversion, simple. Um, so you yeah. can do that, or you can just use the, each token is redeemable, guaranteed for a one night stay at our project. Utility tokens, yeah. So it's that utility token, but as still kind of backed by the value of the project. It's not a direct backing, it's not a legal backing where if it fails. Like a gift card. Yeah. But if it is successful, then that market value for that token will go up. As the project thrives, then it's going to be more expensive to stay there, et cetera. So there is still that kind of speculative element of it, should you succeed. If you want to use that token model, of course, you don't have to. Um, so those two ways would be ways that you could connect it to the value of the project and the land itself. Where one, the secondary, it's implied and probably as good as. Where the first, it is legally constructed that way. And then, of course, anything in between, as that's a spectrum, right? Do you see a need as you approach institutional capital to have every one of the projects be promising the same type of backing? No, absolutely Can not. And we're selling that as a benefit because that's more resilient. So we're across nation yeah. states. So one nation state changing their rules or whatever doesn't shouldn't affect our alliance, right? Um, and we can't be able to be attacked by one nation state changing their legal code, right? So having a diversity of different models that all kind of equate to the same thing gives us a more broad spectrum of backing. So maybe one institution might say that, okay, well, you're only legitimately backed by 200 million in land, but you're theoretically backed by 700 million or whatever. Like, however, they might, they might look at it. They might, you know, come in or come in less because of that viewpoint. But you know, having that diversity and that resiliency is really what we're after because we're going to need a, a diversity of legal structures and constructs across the globe in order for this to really be a sound, you know, transition. Um, so it's going to be nice. complex, and again, that's why a whole chapter is dedicated onto it. But anyway, we'll get there. Roger that. Or unless that other branch of this that we had talked about wants to start that, and again, they already have. There's already been a governance meeting happening weekly. Um, just come into Discord, say, hey, I want to be a part of that, and we'll keep weaving that in. Awesome. Um, Will. 
Hmm. Actually, it's uh, Stephen that wants to speak on this one. Um, yeah, I've really been wanting to jump into conversation last week and this week and really step outside the talk of tokenization because tokenization has an inherent flaw in that if you, Reiki, want to invest in our eco village and years down the road, as we've succeeded in, in some aspect, you want to sell your tokens to form your own village with the beautiful template that we've created, then the traditional market says that that, that you wanting to cash out, even though you may love our property, you may completely still support what we're doing, but just because you want to move your equity somewhere else, it drives our token value down. And I've been searching for a solution to that for a, racking my brain for over a year now, and, and I've come up with that solution. Um, secondary NFT markets are the solution. So um, we're, we're doing our project launch completely through NFTs. We're starting with traditional financial tools, uh, starting with the, the major. So if, if the land is not owned yet or needs money, then we're going to start with a uh, infrastructure bond. It's going to be a N NFT regenerative infrastructure bond. And what this is going to come with is slightly better returns as you lock your money away than a normal infrastructure bond in a, in a normal non-regenerative city. city. Uh, it also comes with uh, access perks a la timeshare. It comes with fun DAO co-creation process. So if you're an NFT investor, you get to uh, give input uh, as we're developing East Village, West Village, Hive Eco Village, and um, you know get first first uh, pick on on the property that you want to invest in, the sub property there, or the entrepreneurial uh, lease that you want, the agricultural futures. So the futures, the leases, the, the, the entire bond funding, the entire city, um, this will all be NFT based. And so if somebody uh, wants to sell out because they need a uh, real world fiat to purchase a new property and do something regenerative for the world. Just injecting, um, please don't call it real world. <laughs> the old <Yeah>. world. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, um, but th th they are hyped about this this uh, project that they're um, that they're selling out of. But it, they're more hyped about their new opportunity. But it's not a bad thing. This NFT goes on to the secondary market. It's like wow, look how look at the amazing returns I've been getting over the last five years on this timeshare slash and a uh, real estate bond. Uh, that also gets me access to this land that I've built a home on. So now I don't need the I don't need to be a whole bond funder. I'm going to pass that pleasure off to someone else, and hopefully, because of what it's producing through the agricultural leases, the residential leases, the hybrid artist leases, uh, this this NFT bond they're holding is is more valuable. Uh, and then our our general the value of, of our token, to, so to speak, for the village. Would be more about the market cap of all the nfts and we're using uh the lens protocol which is a social graph social database that we've just uh, our tech team has just launched on the telos evm last week um so we think it's gonna be very easy to track our internal worth and that it, it uh is a is a path to a decoupling from the fiat petrodollar that we all want to be broken free from and and uh yeah, so we're kind of thinking outside the world of, of token value so much and thinking secondary market for fun access NFTs. Um, that was a perfect time for that. And I want to get you uh, a little bit more space to share about that. So if you prepare something a little bit more in full for projects that are wanting to take that route and raise with NFTs, because um, that's what also Regen Gardens is working on is the marketplace for launching your NFT and actually selling it, having people move it around and all that fun stuff, which I can give it to Sydney just real quick to weave this one in. So this would be to talk about that diversity one more time is we wouldn't, well, having a diversity of different ways of backing projects as well. So as William's coming, sorry, Stephen, you're coming in and sharing, that diversity is exactly healthy in what Regen Civics is looking for. So I wouldn't say that we just have this one token. Like I said, we're gonna have tokens on different blockchains as well and various types of different tokens. So we start having a portfolio of different assets that are representing this regenerative transition, right? So this is exactly how we have to start thinking about this. It's a little bit different from the old paradigm of thinking it, which wants to try to concentrate everything. Into... Anyway, you guys get it? Sydney, please. 
Yeah, um, a couple of things. One, I would love to start collaborating with you all around a collection for the Alliance as a whole to start to compensate the organizations that are servicing the 13 projects and then also for the funding to go to the projects itself and then others that are serving in different ways. Um, and I can just quickly share my screen to share the process that we've developed to support that. Um, so I hope that's okay, Reiki. Um, I didn't know exactly why you wanted to call me, but I feel like since I have everyone here, this will be helpful. So um, when you go through the steps, you'll choose your role, behavior, um, you'll verify who you are. And then you'll see that there's um, this, this academy, which provides education on crypto, NFTs, et cetera, and then a creator onboarding section. And it just takes you through all the questions that you would go through when you're designing your own collection. And Regen Garden is designed for collections that are trying to provide collectors with utility, fundraising potential, and um, you know measurable impact. So you'll go through that to prepare you to then go through our type form um, and then that asks you even more technical questions about rarity and utility, um, how many NFTs you want, et cetera. And then after that, we'll schedule a call with our development team to get into the weeds even more so it'll inform our conversation. So basically the hope that I'm wanting to share is that we'll come together around launching a collection together that fundraises for the Alliance. And then for those of you who are ready to design a collection for your specific project, you'd go through those questions and then we'd work together to help you launch a collection. So what Regen Garden is, it's like Reiki Express uh, Marketplace, but it's also an agency. So we're providing not only the tools and education, but a team of people to support you with launching your project. So Lauren's asking, what is a collection? So um, that's what they're calling it, an NFT collection. It's a collection of digital assets that typically what we see now is their art pieces that reflect or resemble your mission or goal. So I can show you guys um, Lala Gardens. She's done an incredible job. She's like a case study for what we can do here. So if you scroll, you can see this is regengarden.io. You can click on her collection. So she's created all these different characters and we helped her with the generative art creation, meaning she created the different eyes and the different creatures and the different backgrounds, et cetera. And then we use software to mix and match those different characteristics and attributes. So when you would buy an NFT, you'd be funding Lala Gardens and then all the different causes and initiatives that she's trying to fundraise for. So she's trying to feed people and solve issues of homelessness in Fort Collins. She also works with goats and does education and workshops on her farm. So the idea is that when you buy one of her NFTs, you're funding these initiatives and then you can actually get badges attached to your NFT um, or you can get additional NFTs airdropped to you per your contribution. So if you attend an online event or an in-person event and you do something valuable that can be measured and tangible, then she can send um, our development team your wallet address and make sure that you get that NFT badge or that additional NFT airdrop to you, which would unlock further perks and benefits per your contribution. So that means that now, instead of just fundraising to a cause and feeling good, you can actually buy a digital asset, which contributes, and then per your additional participation and impact, that NFT would actually evolve and grow in value. And then if you did want to sell it, you'd actually get a return on your investment that's directly tied back to what you did to support the cause or the community that's benefiting from your purchase of that NFT. So it's like a whole new way to package value and to track the members' contributions to what you're, what you're fundraising around. Um, was that clear? Does anyone have any questions? There's a large FAQ section on this website too that you can dig into. That was epic. Beautiful over to Sydney. Um, okay, so we got about six minutes. Any general questions? Um, as I pull up something. There's a follow-up question on that steps. for Sydney around the uh, the event on Thursday. What's happening there? Is that a launch? Is that a training class? Tell us a little more about Thursday, please. Yeah, so every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, the team meets. So that's our developers, our onboarding people, 
Um, we're actually going to use that Thursday meeting to kick off our ambassador program. We're also launching our own tokenomics model to reward our most active community members and team members. And we're not going to be putting that token on a global exchange because of what Steven just mentioned about how the market can change the value of your token. But um, yeah, we're gonna be kicking off the ambassador program then, but that's just like a weekly time that we gather to connect around projects to share updates. But we can def definitely schedule additional meetings outside Thursday to dive into a specific project. Like if you are ready to go, you filled out that type form and you wanna start ideating, we can schedule a one-off conversation just with your project to dig into developing your collection. So I sent you an invite, Anna. If anyone else wants an invite, let me know and I'll-, I'll Yeah, ask. could you put the Zoom link in the chat? Yeah, sure. Thanks. I know you put the Discord link, but some of us older folks like the direct Zoom link. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Anders, and then there's a question from Will, and then I'll sum up some next steps. I was curious about the comment that Will made um, with regard to land, the value of the token going down if somebody wants to exit. Um, and I was curious, like, what the philosophy is behind that. If the token is based on the land value and the token is based upon, you know, real things that are happening, I I don't see that correlation. So I just I'm open to learning quickly if that's possible. Is that possible to do quickly, Will and Stephen, or do you want to bake that into your presentation next time you share? Um, can you summarize the question again so Stephen understands? Yeah, the, the statement was that the value of your to, of your token or of your property would go down if somebody wants to sell out. And how's that true? If it's based of if the value of the token is based upon the land value, the token is based upon the businesses and the real activity that are happening that hold the value. So why does it go down? Well, it's just traditional uh, buy sell order market dynamics. Um, there, there, you have to have a buyer and a seller, and and where you know as they meet, when it, when there's a sell order, it, it when people are selling, it drives the price down. It's just market dynamics. That's why we want to move it to a completely secondary market to gamify the uh, the uh, the sale of of your. Of, piece of a property uh, to someone else in the community that wants to enjoy the perks of that NFT. Okay. And, the, and the, the total, like I said, total market cap is just the value of every NFT that we've generated. Um, what is the going price on the market for, the, for their most recent sales? That, that's the value of the whole property. You know, the total revenue that's being generated. It's just all the sub tokens added up. Um, I don't know whether this is true, but what I'm feeling is that if you're selling those tokens to someone else in the community, P2P, then it's, that is effectively a secondary market. So it's, it's not the, the buying and the selling is, it equates because someone's selling and someone's buying. So it doesn't actually impact anything. It's only when you're doing it on these markets that Stephen's talking about the traditional stock market and buy and selling and the things like that, they, they, they influence the price of the stock. Um, but this isn't that. This is the new world version. And I don't, if, you, if you're going to sell the tokens to someone you know, it's not going to actually impact the price of the token. It's just a trade. It's just an exchange. So it's, it's very similar to what Stephen's saying with the NFTs. And both, both ways can work. Um, the, I, the blockchain way just automatically tracks the value, where if you did P2P of your assets, it's uh, harder, harder to attain the the total value of your project without keeping might, track of all the might private be diving too off far off the deep end without enough follow-up with how we got here um so we're on the hour of our time right now um so we need a little bit more time focused a little bit on this i think specifically and it's going to talk about secondary markets i think that's probably a complete different session on its own probably multiple sessions in reality um, because the, the truth of this is, is it all depends on how we design it. So there's no one way that's right or wrong. There's a whole bunch of different levers and they mean a whole bunch of different things. And we can remix and match them. So don't worry about the complexity here. There is a lot going on, but these aren't answers you need to sort out right now. Um, and these are things we get to tweak and play with later on. Um, like for example, there's a million different ways we can design secondary markets to get rid of some of these problems that we don't want to see. 
um, if we feel like we need those things. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to summarize for what to look forward to in our journey together before closing our session today. So um, here's a little bit more of just like a process, a simplified process map of where we're headed is first step is doing that master planning, which is really what all the last sessions have been gone about is designing your organization itself, how it works, what members can expect, all that sort of thing. Um, and then we're gonna actually have a session from that member of La Tierra for him to be able to share La Tierra's master plan and the template they have. And we can actually use that. So just like they did with the game guide, we can now move it up to the master plan and kind of have a whole design for how our economy flows. Because that's gonna then reverse and retroactively inform our token design and our organization design and how we want members to contribute. I mean, this is all integral pieces that connect together. So the next step in our process here is then moving on to that master plan and we'll start with a presentation. And then we're gonna get right into membership. So we're gonna start launching some videos. Uh, sharing three of the project announcements at a time. So those are freaking incredible, by the way. I was watching them today and yesterday and just got like beyond inspired. Um, you guys did such an incredible job. Um, so we're gonna be launching those three at a time, making little videos and then having a sign up form for people to be like, yep, we wanna participate in this movement. We wanna sign up. So this is the next step in our journey is I wanna create one shared membership application that asks the questions we're looking for to try to understand who this member is so that we can direct them to projects. So that we can have like one shared pool for all of our projects so that we don't have a separate onboarding and orientation. And some of these things overlap. And I think we can benefit deeply by you know, focusing our efforts into one orientation onboarding journey for people who are just like, yep, we wanna show up to one of these projects or festivals, we wanna contribute in some capacity. They can go through a similar membership process for the whole Alliance and then be suggested based off their preferences, what they said, their membership profile to that point, you know, what projects would be best for them to be able to go contribute to. Um, and there's some alliances out there that I know are working on technology explicitly for this, but we can also build it into Notion. This could just be a type form. So some of you might be aware for that next session, just start sharing in Discord if you already know tools that are really doing a beautiful membership journey like that, um, that we can just start using. Um, just put that in Discord, because that'll be the next step is starting to build our membership for our alliance. Um, and then we'd be continually working on our organizations and getting them ready for that crowd pooling moment and doing the announcements. So once we have our master plans complete, the next step is then announce the crowd pooling event that we're going to be doing and open up our organizations. So the DAOs, dues that we're designing, we're going to open them up for people to be able to start contributing or buying your NFTs or whatever the process is for, you know, bringing value into your community. So we're gonna design that announcement, launch it, prepare for those new energy coming in. So there's a process to prepare for that so that when it does happen, you're not overwhelmed or unprepared because that's another mistake communities make is they run straight to the announcement because they're trying to raise money and build hype. You know, They have this big announcement moment, tons of energy shows up and then it falls flat because there is no way to hold that energy and direct it. So again, that's what I'm trying to, You know, <laughs> my bias here is really making sure our master plan and our foundations are solid so that when that catalyst event happens, we can capture that momentum and energy and run with it. So then that goes into our crowd pooling where we actually start funding resources. So um, this is to give you kind of an expectation is in my world and in I guess this particular branch of the Region Civics Alliance, another branch can do a totally different map. Um, and I recommend that, I think that would be awesome. But in my world, you know, fundraising doesn't happen until here. So to give you kind of expectations as I would love for these foundations to be in place first, at least personally, before I put my reputation out there to tell you know, my family and friends and everyone I know that, hey, the Renaissance is here, invest in these projects. I wanna make sure these projects have you know, a 90% chance of success rather than you know, the typical 90% chance of failure, right? Um, but I think you guys are all already awesome projects, so I'm not putting that on you anyway. Um, then it's about facilitating the crowd pooling journey. So this is those on the ground festivals and then this is part of our process too here in the Regen Civics is to help talk about what it looks like to hold space for those members showing up to your project and actually contributing. So what does that facilitation process look like to jumpstart your project and village and have hundreds to thousands of people actually show up to your project and contribute to what you're working on. And then finally, it's just the ongoing co-creation process. So our alliance never ends, you know, more things will continue. 
as we learn from each other and move into season two, three, four, five, et cetera. Um, so if you have any big changes to this, so master plan, that's all baked into what is our legal outline and our that whole construct and everything, all the questions we've really been asking up until now is all baked into still master plan, which is where we're probably gonna be until people feel really comfortable with what they've got. Um, all right, pause there if there's any final questions before we close for today. I think there was one in the chat box. Yeah, brother, I asked the question in the chat and I sent it to you directly. I'll have an answer, please. Yes. Um, that is a document that is a version 0 0.1. So it's not really meant for public release yet. Um, it was just for people who are totally unaware. Um, so most of you are not aware of this document. It's just the announcement document for Regen Civics. Will saying like, how are you part of this? Um, I've just put in projects up until now that I know are 100%. Yes, like this is the alliance we're part of. You're moving forward. So these are just conversations I've had. There's been no official form. Um, we will have a vote in the Regen Civics Alliance do itself when we launch it to officialize the 13 projects of this season and give them their tokens. So every project who participates in Regen Civics, we want to do a token swap with. So we do an equal dollar value of the project's tokens when they launch it and complete it. So if we do our job of helping you launch it, then I think part of the agreement is then we do a token swap so we're co-invested in each other's success. Um, and this is how the Alliance kind of grows. Um, so anyway, we'll walk through that process after the do is formed and we invite the initial membership. The very first step to all of this is if you're one of those representatives, go to the do itself, which I'll show you just super real quick. Is come again to this page that looks like this, and you're going to have a button up here. Let me sign up so you can see what it looks like. <clears throat> but yeah, come here, and if you're one of those representatives, and apply to become a member. And if you are one of the Alliance organization partners that I've been working with, um, that's how it is right now. So Clarity, I've said this a whole bunch, but uh, Regent Civics is starting off as a dictatorship um, with me kind of being the dictator. <laughs> Um, mostly because I don't have enough time with having a newborn to do it any other way, because uh, it's not really my favorite way of doing things. But anyway, if you're not a member of Regen Civics, you'd come here and click become a member. And then that would put in the application form for you to become a member. I'm not going to apply her uh, of Regen Civics. And then when you do, just let me know on Discord and I'll accept your membership here. If you don't know how to do this at all, let me know. And I'll let you, I'll send you the link for how to do Anchor. And I'll put it in the show notes too. So it'll walk you through the process of setting up your wallet. Um, does that answer your question, Will? Um, yeah, it does. I would like to, I'm, I'm calling myself 100% in. Universe Land Trust is an alliance partner. It's 100% in. That's the narrative I'm living by. So I invite you to live by the same thing. So narrative, one story, one vision. But I'm happy to go through the formal process. So, so thank you. Um, any other thoughts or questions before we close today? Great. Well, feel free to unmute yourselves and make any sort of goodbye. I'm just uh, right. Yeah, I'm just happy oh, to be back and seeing the progress. Um, We've been having a great success with the with the app games, and uh, and I think this will be an uh, awesome way to be a kind of a showcase of the tools as well, and like give others the ability to do token swaps um, because we we we'll we'll be bringing forty eight people a month through through the eco, the, uh, the United Planet ecosystem, so a lot of cross pollination. Yeah. This is what I want to hop on a longer car with you, Lucian, and record it for all of your benefits. So the up game yeah. can be one of those like portals into our village movement, because that could be one of those places that's helping people kind of understand a little bit more about this culture. That's going to make that process of orienting about what's going on here and the process of helping them understand how to participate in your community is so much easier. So this is another. And we've got like project. we've got a lot of leaders yeah. from the like Regen Civics, like Stephen Brooks is coming to the game, like Brock Pierce is coming to the game. There's like lo lots of folks that can be helpful to the ecosystem coming to the games. All the games are now like over. Like we'll have a wait list for every game, which is great. Um, but so now it's about like identifying who are the kind of the athletes of uh, the of the regenerations that can 
bring as much value as possible into the ecosystem. So it's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And if you want, you can make an announcement and share a little bit more about how you can apply for that too. In the yeah, up, up, up dog game, but yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Um, I love this. If there's anything else, because great stuff is coming to the fore. So anyone else have anything they would want to leave in before we close out? Okay. So now feel free to unmute yourselves and say goodbye. And it's been an awesome another session. I will see you all. Ciao, guys. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks, Tom. Thank, Thank you. See you yeah. next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Well done, Reiki. See y'all. Thank you so much. Uh, you want to hop on right now? Do you have time? Um, let me call you on Telegram.